Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Crooks the Great, and I'm back at you guys with part two of the How to Box series on UFC 5. But this time around, we're gonna be using just four stars in online rank championships. And see, we already got rocked right there with Jorge Masvidal. So it's not a, the best start to a boxing video, but hey, this is what you guys are gonna see in UFC 5. So I don't want to hold anything back from you guys. So as you guys can see here, this guy's putting a pretty high pace on us. He's putting a lot of pressure on us, which you're going to see in UFC 5 with the current state of the game. This is how a lot of fighters are going to are going to approach striking right now. So here we're just trying to gain a little bit of space. He finally backs off of us, hits us with a good uh, rear overhand. But it's our job to keep, not only keep him off of us, but land damaging shots like we just did with the jab hook right there. We're going to have to do do and be comfortable with a lot of pocket fighting against Nick Diaz. And right there, he missed on a kick and we made him pay with the lead hook. But you see, we're right back into the pocket. And this kind of trends towards where we were in UFC 4. I preached being comfortable with being in these kind of fights because if you're not, people are just going to put an, a crap ton of pressure on you. Like my opponent is right here. So here, we're looking for counters. We're not trying to eat too many damaging strikes coming back, but it's not looking good as, as I think we have a cut on our lip. And he's trying to block break me, but right there he hits us with a clean slip counter. And then he taunts us, though. All right, I'll remember that. As we stun him right there, we taunt him right back. Let him know, hey, you know what, bro? You ain't the only one that can land these, these strikes inside this pocket. So here we've reset things, hit him with a good slip straight because a lot of his strikes are starting, or his combinations are starting off with jabs. He's going with a lot of jab lead hook combinations as well. Nice ducking under straight right there by him though. We're moving our head nicely. But this is where, I, where we have to risk it to get the biscuit as we hit him with a clean jab straight. And that's what I mean. You have to take a little bit more risk with four star fighters especially in ufc 5 because a lot of these guys against meta fighters are going to lack the damage but here we're doing a good job of of dropping and mixing in our timing throwing a lot of offbeat strikes just to kind of just mix them up and mix in the timing a little bit right there we're jabbing putting some pressure on him crack him right there with a clean slip hook off the sh off the jab gets the job done with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the second fight here. Now, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the second fight of the video, and we're taking on one of the meta fighters in lightweight in Charles Du Bronx Oliveira, and we're going to be using Bobby King Green, which y'all know I'm a big Bobby Green fan. I mained him a lot in UFC 4. So we're going to try to get some work in with him here on UFC 5. Now, you notice immediately that this pace is a little bit more is a lot more slowed down than the previous fight and that's because with meta fighters they don't need to rush or risk nearly as much as when you're using a four star fighter so this guy feels comfortable with standing out at range against us with charles Oliveira. but we're doing a good job of working in body punches not just head hunting because bobby green only has a 92 punch power Compared to Charles Oliveira's 94, so we really need to try to mix it up to get damage up to the head. So here he's pressuring us a little bit, but we're doing a good job of ripping to the body and answering up top to the head. Right there, we barely miss on the slip straight, and he clenches us up. Pushes us up to the cage right there. Tries to go for the standing guillotine, but we were on it, and we denied it. So here we're doing so far so good. And this is how you have to box in UFC 5. You got to take your time. You got to take your time and pick your, pick your strikes very, very wisely. Because if you don't, the meta fighters are going to make you guys pay. It's right there. And I noticed that he's going down to the body with the body kick a lot. So we are catching him now. Staying patient with it. Break through his block, but not over committing on long combination strings. That is especially important. Especially important. Not especially. <laughs> especially important when you're using four-star fighters not to overextend on your combos. 
Keep him nice, short, and sweet. A nice ducking straight. We're starting to get a, a read on where he wants to do, what he wants to do, and where he wants to go. He's popping off a lot of jabs, trying to slip hook us as well. Crack him right there with a clean three piece and get the first rock of the fight with a nice, short, and sweet three punch combination. So, right there, we hit him again with another clean three piece. He's clinching us up, goes for the standing gilly again, but we denied that thing. Now here we're winning the round, so we don't have to we don't have to press too hard like we were at the beginning of this round because we're winning the round. So we're popping off the jab, going down to the body. Right there, he decides to single leg bails us, tries to get us down on the ground, but we deny that thing. And with 15 seconds left, it doesn't look like he wants to throw anything too big, but we almost got caught ducking right there. We almost got caught, so we gotta be aware of that. That's going to be the end of the first round. Now, we did a great job of spacing things out, mixing in some offbeat combinations, and then we were able to catch him with an offbeat three-punch combination that did stun him. As you see right there, he caught us with a nicely timed head kick. But we did win that round. We did win that round, and we landed at a pretty high, pay, or a pretty high rate, too, with what we threw. So, so far, so good. And we're going to try to maintain that here in the second round. So here I noticed that he added in a leg kick. That's a little bit of an adjustment, but we crack him right there with a clean jab uppercut. And I would be expecting him to try to clinch us a lot more too. So that's gonna be that's gonna open up the straights and the jabs when we're in close. So right there, he single leg bails us, tries to take us down, but we're on that denial. Single leg bails us again and takes our back right there. And he's able to finally get us to the ground right here, but he makes a mistake and lets us roll to full guard. Now here we gotta be careful, obviously, because Charles Oliveira does have good jujitsu. So we roll into sprawl. He tries to take us in the back sitting and he's successful right here, but we immediately transition out. Now for those of you guys that are having trouble with uh with the ground game, I am gonna be dropping a grappling tutorial. I'm just kind of waiting for after the first patch because I wanna see what they what they work on. In terms of takedowns and in terms of like ground GA and stuff. Before I start to make a video on it. So here we're stuck in a submission. We race him right there and we're able to get out of the submission. With low stamina but hey. We're not on the ground anymore. So here I do notice that he's single leg bailing. But he cracked us with a clean uppercut as we were trying to go down to the body. But we came back. Heard him right there with a clean straight lead uppercut. Because he rushed. Now we're trying to take advantage of where we have him. But he did a good job of circling off. So now we need to reset. But notice how we're putting a little bit more pressure on him in this round than we were in the first round. Popping off the jab. Occasionally throwing and leading with that rear hook. Because I figure he's going to try to slip. And hit us with a slip hook or a slip straight. Still just playing it patient. There's another single leg bail. But this time he's able to get us down with a nice judo throw in the side saddle. So now here we got to be patient on the ground. Roll the backside. He's going to try to take the back, but we deny that thing. We're going to wait a second, and then we're going to go to full guard. There he goes to the transition, gets back into our half guard, but we immediately try to go to sprawl, but this time he denied it, and he goes back into side saddle. Now here he goes. He's going for the arm triangle, and this could be very, very dangerous. So we faked right there to try to get him to block the fake. We try to roll the backside, but he did a good job of denying that. Now we're going to try to race him right here, but we made one big mistake right here, and we rolled to north and south. We should have went the other direction because we just rolled ourselves straight into a rear naked choke. And that's going to be the end of the round right there. We did do a good job of hurting him and stunning him, but he did get a stun as well. And he did get that submission. So, you know, we lost that round. But we're doing a good job on the feet. We just got to try to keep it on the feet. As he single leg bails us again, but we deny the jujitsu sweep right there. Crack him with a good jab uppercut for our troubles. And so now we got to slow it down. 
And when you get against guys like this that are just single leg bailing, like he's doing right now, you have to take it slow. You have to be able to slow things down and not just spaz out and be throwing combinations at him because that just makes things easier. So you see, because we're slowing things down, we're making the better reads on the single leg bails and we're landing some damaging combinations along the way as well. There's another turning takedown, but we denied that thing because I'm expecting it. So here he's in a lot of trouble. And him doing the most with trying to get the takedowns with uh, single leg bailing, as well as shooting for turning takedowns, lets me know he feels very uncomfortable with where we're at on the feet. So we're going to pressure him. Notice how I'm just popping out single strikes. Crack him right there with a clean hook. Drop him right there. And that's going to be it. That's going to be it for the fight. And it's that easy. It's that easy when you just slow it down and take your time to get the KO with the boxing. And, of course, we're going to hit him with the no respect right there because he was just trying to cheese us like a motherfucker at the end right there. But that's it for the video, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I do post UFC 5 content on this channel daily. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.